You know, computers didn't always just sit on your desktop. This is Jonathan Mum in Mountain View. We'll take you through the Computer History Museum in high definition coming up in tonight's California Postcard. Of all the things you might expect to find in the Computer History Museum, an abacus probably isn't one of them. But then, people have been computing things for a long time. The absolute oldest exhibit in our whole museum is, is this little box here, which is called Napier's Bones, and basically it's a pocket calculator, 1600. Computers, as we know the term, didn't come along till World War II, full of vacuum tubes, relay switches, resistors, and capacitors. They were called mainframes, and they needed some space. What you're looking at here is, is one-eighth of one machine. It was huge. It had 45,000 vacuum tubes in it. This was IBM's SAGE, a Cold War defense system with built-in operator comforts, cigarette lighter and ashtray. Business computers took up entire rooms programmed by punch cards. Control panels were covered with switches and flashing lights, which might have had something to do with marketing. Because if you paid $2 million for a machine, the boss come by the computer room, you want to see those lights flashing and those tapes spinning. <laughs> know what I mean? <laughs> it was the fastest computer in the world in 1964. There, there were supercomputers that created so much heat they had built-in refrigeration units. One even had a cooling tower. This Cray 2 would have set you back $20 million. This is about a fifth the speed of a $1,000 laptop today. Here's a good example of some early disk drives. Things would get smaller, though. With the 60s came transistors. Today, every transistor in this computer could be on one chip. Digital Equipment Corporation came out with this mini-computer, but still didn't see the future. And I think their CEO or somebody once said, I don't know why anybody would need a computer at home. The Neiman Marcus catalog did, though. In 1969, it offered a computer to sort recipes for the housewife who had everything. The kitchen computer was listed at $10,600, but that did include a two-week programming course. Even so, they didn't exactly fly off the shelves. In fact, Neiman Marcus never sold any of them. The original Internet linked government labs and universities. Called ARPANET, the network was so small the links could be mapped. And this early server from Google looks like something built in the garage. Uh, before the Google guys had any the money they have now, mm -hmm. they had to improvise. Microcomputers were the domain of hobbyists in the 70s. The first Apple was a kit you built yourself. The XY position indicator was called a mouse because it had a tail. But it was computer games that brought computers into everybody's living room. And then... With the 1981 introduction of the IBM PC, it became mainstream. You know, and those three magic letters, IBM, legitimized the entire technology. People viewed them as toys before. Now try living without them. In Mountain View, Jonathan Mum, News 10.